Are you studying for the Navali and wondering where should I begin? Well, I definitely struggled with this when I started. I was wondering where should I start? What resources should I use? How long should I be studying for? In this video, I'm going to explain how I passed my Navli, give you my experience and some tips to help you along the way. No doubt that studying for the Navli is a challenging thing. It is a difficult exam, seven hours, 360 questions on almost all of veterinary medicine. When I started studying, I was worried. What if I didn't pass? With these last three years of being in vet school, studying, putting in work, a financial burden, just before waste if I couldn't pass my licensing exam, I was concerned that maybe I wouldn't pass the first time and I'd be embarrassed in front of my peers and thought of as incompetent. Once I developed a plan and I started along my way, I gained confidence and I ultimately was able to pass my Navali on my first go. To start off with, you want to get a good solid foundation. You want to understand what you're up against. You want to take a look at which species are going to be covered, what types of diseases, you want to see how long it's going to be, what the sections are made up of. So I would start off with going to the Navli's website. They have a ton of great resources that help explain what the exam entails and what it's going to be like. I would stick with one of the major programs, either Zuku or Vet Prep. I personally had used Vet Prep and that worked great for me, but I've also heard great things about Zuku as well. Whatever you do, either one, get it and just stick with it. My school offered some resources like lecture base that would go on for like three or four hours, discuss a topic. Vet Prep also has these little power lectures and power notes that you can go through if that's your learning style. For me, active recall is the way that I learn best. So I focused mainly on the questions given by Vet Prep. Some of the lectures given at school were just a bit broad and I felt like my time was better served working on the questions and the topics specifically that I knew I had issues with. I took about two to three months to study for my Navli and I took it very early on the third day that it was available. This gave me some time after to take a trip and I traveled to Vietnam for a month. Having this trip plan gave me some excitement and some things to look forward to as I grinded away in the library, sometimes not even seeing the light of day. The first few weeks I spent focusing on what the exam was gonna be, wrapping my head around what the questions were like, what the format was like, which species to study and what type of questions were. I got comfortable with the vet prep site. I took a bunch of practice questions, just get myself a little bit more familiar with what the Navli was gonna be. And after a couple of weeks of doing these practice questions and some research, I took my first self-assessment. The people who put out the Navli test have a few self-assessments that you can take. And I recommend doing one pretty early on to give yourself a base and to see how you're improving as you study along. Then I also suggest taking one about halfway through your study plan, maybe three to four weeks before the final exam, just to know where you're at, give yourself some type of confidence and help you focus on what the hard parts are that you need to focus for those last few weeks. I would then schedule myself in blocks. I would take two to four hour blocks to just do back to back practice questions, reviewing a little bit along the way for these first kind of month, month and a half. It was just try and get repetition in of doing these practice questions. As time goes on, the practice questions start repeating the ones that you got wrong the first time. So towards the end of your practice, you're gonna have material that you don't necessarily know and the material that you struggle with the most. So the last month or so, you're focusing on that material. This is where I use more study guides. I would kind of look things up that I didn't understand. Some subjects are pretty notorious for people struggling with, such as pig diarrhea. Everybody forgets that. <laughs> Spend more of your time on the things that you do know and that you think you can grasp the concept of. Some of these more detailed things I would just wait till the last few weeks and memorize them. The last few days to the week leading up to your Navli, I would try and take a break. You've done most of your work. Most of the stuff that you're gonna understand, you understand now. Some of the stuff that I talked about, about memorizing, I would focus on some of that material. But for me, I ended up going to a music festival the weekend before my Navli. 
I knew I had a lot of the stuff down. I just had a few things that I wanted to try and memorize. So I enjoyed myself. I think it reduced my stress and left me going into the Navli a little bit less, a little bit more calm. The day before and the morning of, I wouldn't try and learn anything new. I would just focus on going in, being comfortable, being calm. Make sure you bring a bunch of snacks during the exam. The exam is held in different proctoring locations, but they usually allow you to leave for breaks. You can sometimes go to your car, you can go outside, take a snack. I used some of my breaks, I didn't use all of them, but I definitely took a longer break halfway through my exam went outside, got some fresh air, got something to eat, and then finished the exam. Some tips while you're actually taking the test. I would be sure to read the questions. Vet prep, once you get in the habit of it, you start to recognize patterns, and when you see it, you're very fast to just click through it. But the material on the actual Navli can be worded a little bit differently, so just spend the extra second to think about those questions and read them more thoroughly than you have in your practice question. A helpful technique that I use was that if I knew a question, I would confidently put it down and leave it alone. If I didn't know a question, I would think about it for no more than a minute and then I'd mark it and put the answer that I thought. At the end of that section, I would then go through and only review the questions that I'd marked. This helps me to spend more time on the questions that I potentially had a chance at and whatever time I had left over, I could spend on some of these questions that I may not even get right in the first place. Overall, the Navli is a challenging exam. It takes a long time to study for, but you know what? If you're in vet school, you're a person who does challenging things. You have gotten into vet school. The acceptance rate is 10 to 20% and you've gotten through three years of a veterinary degree. My suggestions are to have a plan and stick with it. You're gonna do fine on the Navli. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out and comment. If you like what you saw, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.